क्यूट द पावर ऑफ नोइंग वेन टू वॉक अवे बाय एनी डोग बेस्ट सेलिंग ऑथर ऑफ थिंकिंग एंड बेट्स सो अबाउट क्यूटिंग बिफोर वी गो गो मच ऑन इट बिकॉज वी वेयर हार्ड वायर टू थिंक दैट सक्सेस इज समथिंग अबाउट हार्ड वर्क वी लर्न फ्रॉम स्कूल then if you are a fan of self fiction books uh, you would know more about that like persistence perseverance and maybe if you are so fan of it you would have read grit by angela duckworth as well so we are our today's topic is something directly opposite of that the untold story of success which is quitting we usually tell that winners never quit quitters never win but we are going to rethink about that and check whether that is really true uh coming to that like there are multiple uh, multiple chapters on this book so i'll quickly go through a contents so chapter 1 is opposite of great virtue is also a great virtue so because generally great virtue is uh, being like uh, cuting like so but generally it is considered that sticking is a great virtue like that cuting on time usually feel like cuting too early if you cut too early people will tell that okay it is too early even we feel like that and people others also feel same to us as well should i stay or should i go especially when you are on something uh that create something like a dilemma like you would not be able to easily quit and that will be one of the most toughest decision you can ever make whether it is in your career or in a job should i stay or should i go even in a family relations or anything like that because when you are in it you cannot we'll go through multiple scenarios fourth chapter is about escalating commitment so when we are on something like when we invest on something or invest time money resources or whatever it is love affection hundreds of things whatever as a human transaction wise we are inputting on something we try to add on it we try to commit on it and uh, sunk cost that chapter 5 sunk cost and fear of waste if you are if you know about sunk cost sunk cost is something like whatever we have spent so far so when we are trying to make decision we usually think about sunk cost but natural or or best practice is not to think about it but we are unable to do it monkeys and pedestal interesting topic which alphabet is following like monkeys a big problem pedestal is something everybody is talking about so about like like for example you building an app or something what is the app design and such thing is like pedestal but what is actually monkey is something like what this can contribute to that uh, users and how company can achieve its objectives or visions objectives like that chapter 7 you own what you bought and what you thought so generally we try to give more value to something which we own or which we bought than something of your your company you will have more endowment on that even if it is someone else company you don't have that much endowment in cutting and all this thing especially in other topics as well and uh, eight is talking about hardest thing to cut is who you are identity and dissonance cognitive dissonance and all we talk about their identity like especially the hardest thing to cut is cut is something like the habit of you there are multiple books joe dispenza book and also like uh, just uh, just forget what you are or identity and all these things but generally it is hardest thing to cut when you are on something when you become somebody then if you are a golf player or if you are a manager or if you are somebody that makes it hard to quit as well so that's identity and cognitive dissonance is something like what we believe and we try to stick and consistent and all find someone who love you but doesn't care about hurt feelings about coaching and all these things lessons from force quitting there are multiple examples because usually Uh, such such topics are not been talked most of the things we heard about stories about success and that inspire or something that is all success books are but there's something else myopia of goals goal setting is something considered as like the benchmark of success and all but we are trying to tell about this goal setting sometime people make it myopic and because goal setting means achieve or not achieve so it's like done or not done like that 
so you have to think in a different perspective we'll go through all of that so this is a quick summary or quick uh, review of the chapters of the book we'll go in detail chapter by chapter so chapter 1 opposite of great virtue is also a great virtue so muhammad ali the famous boxer if you know about him he's a man who is in the ring talking about like i'll be flying like a butterfly and be and i'll just hit you on this one he is considered as one of the most confident or well marketed or or something that like an epitome of confidence and all but the author start in the book talking about muhammad ali because muhammad ali was a heavyweight champion he just uh, so he was talking about a a boxing championship where he was talking with four men and he was winning there but actually he was at age of 35 or about that one and his coach is asking him to retire his doctor is telling your body is not okay for it still he is persisting to it muhammad ali and he is a good example of that and his persistence of that later on at some point in time he get failed in such a way that because some point in his career he was not able to compete in boxing and because of the vietnam war and he was not against participating and all but after that he come back he fail in such a way that silver sir stallone who was sitting as just watching an audience there he told that muhammad ali was hit like he almost like autopsy on a body or something like that and you know the further story of muhammad ali he was having parkinson disease and but still he is a legend but he is a good legend as well so similar to similar to have bruce lee also there are different story book is not talking about that but you will get a similar version of that there also so there is always some limit on something yes sure human mind is limitless but human body is not and a lot of other things also life is too short and all those topics so generally we are hard way to stick there is a negative connotation on quitting that make us not sticking but actually grit is a virtue if you perceive or persist with a passion that is what we call like grit angela duckworth's uh, famous book on that but quitting is something wiser than that so quitting is also a decision making tool uh, what i why i am trying to tell is that just imagine when muhammad ali if you'd have been quit at that time that give him lot of options to do something else he was a legendary person he can just take care of his body and do something else like that so that gives when you're doing something or when you're stopping something or when you're telling no to something that no create an opportunity for lot of other yes because many many companies like apple warren buffett and all these people they tell that they used to tell 1000 no and one yes because they want to choose what is really important for them so that allow them to make so that's a quitting is actually a proper decision making tool even if you are in a career or if you are investing in a company that quitting of that particular project or that particular part of the things allow you to do something else so that that makes it a new decision it explores to the new chapters of the of your life quitting naturally is uncertain because there is a lack of information which makes us like strategy is one of the important things on that aspect as well so generally when we are quitting because it is something about the future we are not aware of it so that lack of information somehow make it trouble but this books give some idea about you can think about both options and take an expected value we'll come to that later so expected value and then take a decision on that even though you don't have all the information available because especially even in the strategy if you if you go in our follow our channel you will find a book about roger al martin about new way to think and all martin is talking about strategy there there is another famous story in the book talking about hutchinson kasikse and taske is a uh, three people who try to climb or just conquer the mount everest the highest peak on earth and they are not famous for climbing on earth maybe you, you would have not heard much about them but actually 
these are the people who climb there because in mount everest the important aspect is that most of the people die not by climbing mount everest but when they are coming down it is eight times more when people climb, just coming down they used to just die like that and also there is some like turn around time when for climbers so they used to climb at some point time and they have to decide whether to continue or not continue so kasik say and task these three people mention they they were find a point where they they think that they should turn around and one of the person was telling okay i should continue but later on they decided and they coming down so that makes them that famous and there were a lot of movies documentaries everything talking about that you can f- just find it from googling it but the point is that that allow them to do something else for example a uh, lot of companies like blockbuster was previously a famous doing the movies and all these things but when the netflix come they were they netflix even just off given offer to just by so blockbuster told we are not interested but you know now where is netflix now and where is blockbuster similar to that lot of multiple companies philips was known to be like a lighting company before they used to sell bulbs even you see many bulbs of philips and all these things but now philips has been focused their majority of the business into healthcare so it become a healthcare company so even the philips that identity as philips as a lighting company or general electric as a lighting company many many example but i'm talking about philips philips here they were ready to ignore that and find their own way and they are persisting there they are succeeding there as well a lot of multiple example nokia's failure famously known like they were not able to change blackberry another example so generally we celebrate somebody's fighting with adversity uh, but that's a, that may be a good thing but generally that make it myopic also to think like what is left there so you have lot to learn from cutters as well lot to learn from failures as well so that's about the book option to quit is rewired reward you with lot of opportunities let's go to the next quitting on time usually feel like quitting too early multiple example but even like right now if you're thinking about something to quit because there was a famous uh, book about free economics uh, by someone like uh, stemin levit so he was having a website like somebody just go there and take like they want to make some decision to stay or quit and they go to the website and do some like something like a like a clicking something and then get it result out of it so if it head and tail or something like a tossing a coin or something so you see like how much people are irrational on making some decisions like so they were even like to go they, that was just an experiment by freakonomics um, author but it was it was just to see the behavioral economics of the people so stewart butterfield who was uh, famous for making the flicker app and it was sold to 25 million to yahoo and all he was a uh, book explain about he was trying to build a app called glitch and it was getting followers and all these things because many startup especially startup is a good example where people put lot of ambitions and ideas about this thing and they're going to become that and this so that cutting is very difficult on that aspects because you have money put it people are following your people are working for you investors are relying on you but one morning stewart butterfield wake up and tell that i'm going to stop glitch it was look like a very unusual or unfortunate or maybe absurd or stupid thing but actually he that allow him to build slack another app by taking the good part because what was happening with glitch was that it was getting some followers but the people were not sticking to it so mostly what people usually do that okay improve more improve more and there was not taking an actual feedback and revising but what butterfield done is that he just tried to take that thing okay he look at future okay he's not clear still he decided to quit and take that good part and make another app and that was really a big success multiple example as well even like uh, it was talking about a famous colonel or admiral in 
in us military he used to talk about uh, think about in history what napoleon would have done in this time or what uh, abraham lincoln would have done in this time so such things even president used to think about in that way so from history is also from cutting and from what happened we can as steve jobs tell we can connect the dots not by looking forward but but looking backwards so quitting on time feel too early hardest time to quit as we explained earlier when we are in it when we are doing something it is very hard to quit because we are hard wired or trained or imposed by society to stay on course we feel like quitting is slow down the progress so when 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 you have a decision of quitting and persevering is a close call like on a same thing then better you follow your not heart not brain uh, but maybe something outside spirit just go outside of you like like buddha is telling like just lose the identity of you and then quitting may be a better option if you have an a close call with that when waited long we blame and uh, when waited too early we blame as well so generally people rationality rationality is another aspect but quitting on time usually feel like quitting early but actually it is not the case so that's about this chapter let's go to the next should i stay or should i go multiple answer but this book uh, this chapter start with uh, some taxi drivers they were having this is usual also they used to have some targets every day they have to achieve and all these things so this taxi drivers they were having like when they are having a good day they achieve the target they just go back to the home maybe in 4 or 5 hours they get this and they go back to home but when they have a bad day they are not getting any customer they used to stay more and more and more and more generally this is a tendency because they are not taking any feedback from from that equation but what is really happening is that they are not trying to learn what is happening on that good day if they could have learned that and company would have appreciated that they could have explored more money on that good day or high day maybe there is some event happening there or maybe that is the day normally people want taxis on that particular city a lot of factors or variables there but when we are thinking about so myopic okay you achieve this much target say 1000 dollar per day then you can go home so when we are in loss specially we try to be more like take more risk on creating more loss so it's like a katamari or snowballing effect it's a japanese word actually so when we are in loss we gamble when you are in loan you have a good tendency to take more loan but if you are not then you are mostly you will not take the loan so cute even it is for famous investors and all when they're buying decisions and selling decisions usually when they are in loss they take to because selling decisions will be affected by that so they make very bad decision when we are buying they used to make good decisions as well and retail investors and all these people same thing even the prospect theory by daniel kahneman and tversky talk about this loss aversion strategy when we are in <clears throat> people are naturally think about loss averse we try to avoid because if somebody is telling okay this item is in the offer we are very much loss averse that we think that okay if you don't buy it now we'll lose it so we'll go and buy it and that that tendency has been misused by lot of lot of companies and all this thing so should i stay or should i go that is an important part so basically we have to consider lot of aspects like loss aversion what when we are in it that all really affect even though we think that we are making rational decisions mostly we are making irrational it's a predictably irrational as dan really if you're interested in reading the book dan really book is a very interesting on that aspects chapter 4 escalating commitment this one as we mentioned when we are in loss we double down so when you are in 100000 what dollar in loss we try to just continue with the same loss and try to think that okay maybe we can do we can save the company so he'll put one more 100000 more 
so we tend to stick to the courses what we are for example if you are in a career and you are you are still having a problem with this one a problem with your performance all you think look okay, i am already here i am already invested this much time like not even thinking about sunk cost but something about we already committed on it we double down on it escalation of commitment happen in low stake and even in high stake situation even in the family relations or anything even in low stake and high stake this escalation of commitment is happening even not only there for example if you think about governmental projects this book is talking about some railway projects and all from san francisco to i'm not sure which uh, city but there is between and the, they are trying to struggling with that many government project not only that many government projects somehow start with the things and they try to think that okay we already committed this or we already promised this to the people they just put some money and that that double down their commitment we don't want people to tell somebody like we are inconsistent we are coming to that thing so we try to be like consistent with our thoughts and behaviors and all like what leon festinger cognitive dissonance and all so especially about afghanistan war it was started to just after 911 but it took almost like more than two decades and four three four presidents and they spent almost like 1.5 trillion dollars and still they did not win it the next day taliban occupied afghanistan so somehow it was an a classic example of double down or escalating commitment even it in climbing the mountains we have already climbed this much okay let us do you don't have to turn around <clears throat> so that's what happening so chapter 5 sunk cost and fear of waste we come across that sunk cost effect sunk cost generally economically it is like something what we have spent so far that is what sunk cost tell if you have a project whatever you spent till today that is sunk cost you already spent it so illusion to account previously sunk cost when we walk away we feel like we wasted this much thing okay you are in a college or something if you want to get drop out or build something just an example i'm telling it i'm not uh, insisting to get you drop out we have a sunk cost fallacy of just staying there if you are in a company okay you invested this much money if i leave now i will lose all that thing but if you stay there you will double down you will have a snowball effect again so difficult to close mental accounts that's the most important thing so sunk cost and fear of waste is what is difficult for quitting so you have to understand when you are having in a quitting decision always think that sunk cost really matter even management perspective we should not take into account sunk cost when we are deciding on something future that's classic but we are not able, even in business school you have been taught like that i don't think it is easy to implement that monkeys and pedestal it is a famous uh, there was a project text by alphabet it's talking about this this term is coming from there monkeys and pedestal lot of projects uh, they have been taking care like talking about monkeys generally what it mean is that monkey is a core topic of what it is and like <clears throat> or imagine in another way it is more like a feasibility study or something like that uh, that is to avoid this monkey issue but generally monkey imagine facebook or or any other x company just designing that portal of facebook and all these things you can make it 100 people or many 1000 companies can join software engineer combine look like same like facebook that is all pedestals what really the monkey is to get that billions of users and growing and having the people put the ads and getting revenue that is actually the monkey so until and unless you can achieve that monkey part first there is no point of designing this one people try to just think that okay my dream is getting achieving by doing or focusing on this pedestal part making a good office or doing that this and like this but if until and unless you go to the core of that topic of your business of your survival of your objective of your impact or presence in the market what you can really deliver if you are not really delivering that then that monkey part is failing until and unless you don't have a monkey 
you cannot ride the pedestal with him so pedestal will be still there but it cannot be a ride so that's that's idea of monkey and pedestal there so tackling the monkey first is important it can save lot of resources even if you're finding on a just attend to the core topic if you can do it then go otherwise leave don't focus on pedestal and waste your resources there also when you enter on something try to set a kill criteria kill criteria is something like which which will have a state and a date okay if i don't achieve this on that particular time i should quit if i don't achieve reach this much meter in mount everest at this particular day i should quit or time i should quit whatever it is so generally that is a kill criteria somehow it's like we are promising to ourselves okay i if i don't achieve that then my monkey is not there i am only building pedestal i am waiting my resources i should quit now that will be like a thinking time or a quitting time that's that's about that when you own what you have what you bought and what you thought environment and status quo bias as we explain environment is something like if i own something i would try to because if if your company is your own idea that is something like your brain child then you would value more like so imagine you have some some item like for example your company or something if that company is not by owned by you you will value less but if it is owned by you you will value more so that is what endowment effect is we are endowed to our ideas and beliefs so we miscalculate the expected value expected value is something like what this will achieve on that future period we miscalculate mostly on an endowment basis if you think like okay it is my own software my own idea i have this one so we try to miscalculate then because we have a more endowment or more bias endowment bias to our own things and ideas and implementations we try to miscalculate that expected value and also we have uh, we stick to the status quo status quo is something status so for example if you want to quit a job and then find another one generally people will be more interested to stay than quitting until and unless you are out like there was a famous poet uh, used to tell that until and unless, about refugees till until and unless people are on the mouth of the shark they will not be thinking about going for refuge so they will still until there stay until that that point so generally we like to have status quo that is we are hardware or we that is a least resistance path or something we are tolerant more on bad outcomes by sticking it for example if you stay there and you are going to loss we are more adapted or more manageable or more tolerant to that loss and then you quitting one job and finding another job and losing there or finding another company and losing we try to stick and lose that is we are more interested than quitting and making loss so we omission commission bias we are tolerant on the existing thing and then commissioning on that so that's as well so what you own the endowment and status go by so also please keep a watch on it when you are trying to make accounting decisions most probably this too will be affecting your decisions as well chapter 8 hardest thing to cute is who you are identity and dissonance about cognitive dissonance generally this also is cuting on you itself cuting on who you are because especially who you are is what is your effort so far done about how others look at you how your colleagues or your manager or your family that is that identity of you because uh, used to like that identity usually make you like not able to sleep at night and all these problems lot of mental tensions and all even sadguru used to tell that when you have a sleeping problem uh, they used to tell that okay just reiterate this word i am not the body i am not even the mind so that really help him he is telling like you can have a good sleep at night so here we coming to the point here hardest thing to quit is who you are so when you have most painful is quitting who you are if you are a famous cricketer 
or this one or that one or if you are a owner or a ceo of that company or this building this company so cutting you who you are is the most difficult part also and as well like uh, there was a doomsday which i explained in the initial part about leon festinger they used to talk about that particular day in 2000 something about i'm not really sure about the date they're telling that that particular the world will end and there the some people are trying to learn what these people are doing because somebody is telling world is going to end they sell their things everything like that then when that day come nothing happened they try to stick to their belief and trying to explain versions which satisfy their belief this happened to multiple aspects like if we are if we are doing some problem of our own things we try to find reasons to justify ourselves or if, if uh, the political party you are following is doing some bad things you try to make something which is consistent or like which we try to make sure our belief is correct even though uh, it is not rational but we try to be having this cognitive dissonance we try to just dissonate with that so we desire to have an internal consistency we want people to see that we are consistent if you are telling something and changing our belief we are vulnerable to that inconsistency we try to be consistent in front of people that's that's the main thing so identity bias and cognitive dissonance is also going to affect you in your decision find someone who you love but doesn't care about hurt feelings because that is uh, that's important because you will have lot of people improve like just uh, motivating to stay mostly because hard work as i mentioned like hard work and all this persistence grit and all these things but actually life is too short so you don't have time to do everything what you are thinking so you just have to focus on the limited time your time is limited in that time you have to do something important so when you are outside looking try to see what 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 buddha is telling try to detach from the outcome try to detach from who you are detach from what you made what you already improving or what you are detach from it zoom out then see outside then that will give you a lot of perspective on that when best cutting like when when the best cutting coach whoever it is if it is that is a person or something like a role model actually we should be thinking about long term perspective than short term perspective if that is a best cutting coach so maybe short term it will hurt somebody's feeling or something but long term if you think in long term that if that is giving you an option to cut then follow your coach or follow your heart decision cut improve when start and stop to learning aspect so when your decision to cut actually it improve lot of things and when it start and stop as well so find someone who you love but doesn't care about hurt feelings that could be a best person to be as a coach or as a colleague or as a partner whoever it is lessons from force cutting as we explained before when you are cutting on something when you are telling no to something or when you are not doing something if you are not doing this that give you space to do lot of other things imagine about this is not from the book i'm just telling from like imagine bill gates he's a famous founder of uh, microsoft he was known about the best and he was lot of the first number one richest man in the world and all. but he quit microsoft and leave someone else and he tried to follow something else but if you look at now you can see how much he was able to impact in both ways his company what he built it is already getting like just growing and growing to a trillion dollar company in parallel he is doing all this philanthropic activities and impact on the world that's also creating that much impact so lessons from force quitting actually quitting decision of uh, bill gates have lot of aspects even his issues with his uh, uh, like lot of courts and all these things uh, legal proceedings and all maybe all those impacted i'm just telling from my perspective but still you can see like if you if they he stay as there then he would not be able to do all these things what he is doing now similar to what jeff bezos he was a ceo in amazon but he left now and he is 
going to be blue origin and all these things now so exploration lessons from force quitting actually when you try to tell no you are just open to unlimited opportunities and that exploration of diversification even if you are in an investment or an ideas like especially on investment you are telling diversified portfolio is a very good investment portfolio so especially when you are having a something usually backup plan is good when you have a backup plan that will allow you to think about multiple options and diversification people used to tell that no don't keep backup plan keep it as it is but actually plan a plan b plan c all these things multiple opportunities allow you to have a thinking opportunity to think about multiple aspects of the things our final chapter is myopia of goals goals are good i am sure maybe 1000 people already tell to me tell to you before me about this but it's bad to quit because when you have a goal to do achieve something until unless you achieve that you have you are not achieve so that means it's like a binary yes or no so that give lot of problems because that give lot of stress because you are not going to get appreciated by the passage or a journey to that that is not going to achieve so instead of that we used to tell like if you think about some authors used to tell like mean goal and end goal vision like any and all so end goal is something then okay you can make a mean goal that's another part of thinking about goal but generally goal should not be that much strict strict or confined to it we should make a flexible and we should make intermediate goals like mean goals to track our progress collect feedback rethink to stay or quit so that should be more better then just be myopic and doing something something some staying staying there snowballing to the losses and time and resources because life is too short and quitting some time is more wise it will allow you to give lot of opportunities to do lot of other things so that's the end of the book book summary special books and detail summaries please follow us on our channel and like share and subscribe until we come across by the next book thank you for now bye